Ugh. Supreme Galactic Court of C, most powerful of all high-level languages, now in session. Right Honorable Judges Kernigan and Ritchie presiding, let all parties aggrieved in their pursuit of excellence of C coding be heard. Let all parties transgressed in their C pointer algebra be heard. Let all parties obfuscated in their pure and natural syntax be heard. All rise. Case 13601AK3. License application. Speak your name. It's structurous. State your business you bring before this hallowed court. I'm applying for a license to obtain and operate a C-beam generator. It says here that you want a C-beam generator. Yes, Your Honor. Memory serves. We had someone else apply for a C-beam generator a few years back. Did we not, Judge Ritchie? We did indeed, Judge Kernigan. And if memory serves, that person was a programmer, much like yourself. That was me, Your Honor, but I and was hoping if memory that... serves, that programmer was then practicing Java, not C. Well, yes, Your Honor, but if I and could just clarify a few... And that programmer was told, in no uncertain terms, that she would not receive a license to obtain and operate a C compiler, let alone an apparatus as powerful as a C beam generator while she wallowed in unworthy and defiled computer languages. Yes, Your Honor, but... That was a long time ago, and Java has since... are you or are you not currently developing Java software? I am, Your Honor. Then, your application is denied. I know who you are, Structurist, but even you are not above C. Don't let me see you in my courtroom again, young lady, unless your circumstances have radically changed. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. That's what makes it genius. Saying so much with so little. Like that Jack Nicholson film. What was it? Uh, as Good As It Gets. Excellent film. Where Nicholson plays that character who writes all these romance novels, but essentially can't love. Then he's forced to mind his neighbor's dog for a few weeks. And without knowing it, develops caring, protective, genuinely loving feelings for the dog. He's playing the piano when the realization hits, and he just laughs over a dog. <laughs> And you know immediately that he's realized what's happened. Oh, masterful. And speaking of romance novels, how are things between you and that C programmer of yours? That C programmer has a name, and things between me and Sarah are fantastic. She's smart, witty, laughs at my jokes. We have so much in common. Honestly, I never thought I'd meet a woman I'd have so much in common with. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. You're dating a C programmer? Does she work here? Yeah, in core product. Yeah, high and mighty core product. And she never lets us forget it. Never misses a jab at Java. That's called wit. That's called irritating. Oh my god, they're showing Jaws in the cinema tonight. I haven't seen that movie in a theatre in years. We have to go. You're kidding, right? I, I got us tickets to the baseball game tonight. You, me and Sarah. Oh, damn it. You know, I have a confession to make. I don't like baseball. Never have. All the times I seem to be enjoying it, faked. I knew you never liked baseball. You knew? Clear as day. You always seemed so distant when we went to the games. And I thought I hit it so well. Ha <laughs> ha! And no, this doesn't get you off the hook. You're coming tonight. I already bought your ticket. Hi, baby. Hi, gorgeous. And hi, all your little Java friends. Hi. Hey, Structure, I got one for you. How many non-deterministic garbage collectors does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> Come on, it's a good one. I don't know. No one does. It's a matter of interpretation. <laughs> Get it? Because your language <laughs> is interpreted, not compiled immediately to blisteringly fast object code like C. We do have just-in-time compilers, you know. So snuggle, Chops. We still on for baseball tonight? You betcha. Ah, what a gal. Structures, what was that effect around that chap just there? You saw that? You saw that? That weird light show? And that asterisk? It was hard to miss. You shouldn't be able to see that. You're not a C programmer. What, only C programmers can see it? Well, what was it? Oh, maybe when I took you outside reality last time. 
Could that have altered your psycho digitality? My what? Look, what you saw was the C programmer addressing to a higher plane of existence. Which means? You know how pointers work in C, right? Well, C programmers have access to the reference verse, an infinite collection of planes of existence. C programmers can address up to the next higher plane and a reference back down again using pointers. They can go to higher planes of existence. C is much more powerful than you think. It's actually not a computer language, but the energy field that permeates the reference verse. To be honest, that you use it as a programming language at all is a bit weird. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to let all that wash over me and just ask the obvious. If he addressed up to the next higher plane, how could I still see him in this one? That wasn't him. That was his callback function. His callback function? Yeah, that's what he invokes to dereference back here when he's finished. Dereference, mm-hmm. It didn't look like a callback function. Oh, it's an almost perfect copy of his entire physical and psychological self. Mm, so could I see this higher plane? Sure, but it's almost exactly the same as this one. Adjacent planes are highly correlated. You have to go really far up before things go bananas. Well, now I'm curious. Okay, I'm loading an app onto your phone right now. There, just click the green button. So, did it work? Yep, welcome to the next higher plane. Oh, how disappointing. It really is the same. Well, almost. There can be small differences, but not many. So has my callback function taken over for me on the lower plane? Yep. Why don't you have an ampersand? Oh, I'm panstantiated across the reference verse. Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be panstantiated across the reference verse? And what's that beside Dave? That's not beside Dave. That's beside his laptop. He's running a Java virtual machine. That GC is the garbage collector. Why is the Java garbage collector distinguished on C reference planes? Not sure, but C programmers avoid them like the plague. So it probably doesn't matter. Well, okay then. And I get back down by clicking... The red button invokes your callback function. And? And what? You were saying that you had no hot water last night. Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. That can happen when you dereference back down. In fact, any time anyone loses their train of thought, they're usually dereferencing back from a higher plane. Well, today I learned. You know, you don't seem to be enjoying yourself too much. I hate baseball. Oh? Then why did you come along? Look, he's pretended to like baseball for years. One more night won't hurt him. How can you enjoy watching grown men playing catchy-catchy, running around a field for three hours? But it's beautiful! The strategy of the outfield, the skill of the batsman, the power of the pitcher! The price of the hot dogs. Forget him. He doesn't share our passion for the game. Wait a minute. So you really love the game? Oh, I think it's wonderful. Well, let's just see about that. Huh. You don't love this game. You were dressed up to this plane to get out of it. How did you get up here? You're not a C programmer. I have my ways, and they're not the point. Why aren't you staying to watch the game? Oh, I... I have a headache. You can't stand baseball, and you'll do anything to get out of it. All right, all right, I hate it, okay? Happy now? It's so repetitive and tedious and mind-numbingly boring. And that stupid music! It drives me crazy! Well, why did you come? Because Dave loves it so much. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Well, you're going to have to come clean. I know, I know, but not right now. Well, okay. So, what do we do now? Our callback functions will still be with Dave on the lower plane. And enjoying it more than we were. Yeah? You know... They're showing Jaws in the theater tonight. Oh, I love Jaws. The suspense, the characters, the boat. And seeing as our callback functions are keeping Dave company down there. I mean, he'd never know if we pop out for a few minutes.
And the crunching bone as the shark bites into him. And down in the cage, did you see that? It was amazing. Ugh. But we'd better go back down to the lower plane. How do we do this? It's best if we go back to him in this plane and dereference down from there. Well, there is something you don't see every day. Mm hmm. Oh my god! You won't believe what happened! What? I caught a home runner! I caught the ball! I've waited all my life to catch a home run baseball! Can you believe this? Oh, that's great. And? And? You were saying the pitch wasn't foul? Oh, I lost my train of thought. You were showing me your baseball. Baseball? What baseball? You caught the home run baseball. What? I, I catch a home run baseball. What are you talking about? Maybe didn't happen on this plane. Structures? Just a little confused. Hey, how about that score line, huh? Sarah? Structure? Look, you have to tell him. Tell who what? You know what I'm talking about. The baseball game. You're skipping out on him the first chance you get. Leaving him with that callback function of yours. It's not fair to Dave. I know, I know. I feel awful. But it'll break his heart to hear he spent so much time with my callback function when he thought he was with me. What do you mean so much time? When else have you been addressing the higher planes? Oh, you know, just the odd basketball game. And the odd walk. Things like that. You have to tell him. All right, all right, I'll tell him tonight. <laughs> and, and, and then the pitcher tripped, but still threw the ball and it sailed way, way over. Look, Dave, there's... <sighs> there's something I have to tell you. Oh, great. What? Here we go with the, there's something I have to tell you. Well, it's not really like that. No, no, come on, let's hear it. Hit me with your best, dear John. No, it's not that. It's just, well, I'm a C programmer and we can translate between planes of existence. And when we do, we leave a callback function behind as a physical and psychological copy of ourselves. And, well, I've been... Doing that a lot lately, and I'm sorry I won't do it anymore. That is the weirdest Dear John I've ever heard. But it's not a Dear John! I want to be with you more than ever! Oh? So this callback function? When did you leave me with it? Well, during the baseball games, mostly. Mostly? And the basketball games. The basketball games? And, well, all the games, really. But you're here with me now, right? This isn't your callback function I'm talking to. No, no, I swear, it's me. And I do want to be with you. I really do. Well, okay then. You crazy C programmers and your pointer shenanigans. Let's put all this behind us and move forward. It's open! Hey, my good man. You know, I was just thinking about you and baseball. I found myself looking up key baseball players today on Wiki, diving a little more into the history of the game. It's really quite fascinating. I thought you hate baseball. I know. But ever since that game I didn't go to, it's been more and more in my mind. Look, we need to talk. Well, take a seat. The doctor's in session. It's about Sarah. Oh, how are you two crazy lovebirds? Well, to be honest... Not good, but not in the way you think. Curiouser and curiouser. Remember, she came clean to me about bailing out of the baseball game, among other things. And I still haven't forgiven you for that either. I explained. I just went out to find out where she was. You went to a movie. That is true. Yeah, well, we've been spending a lot of time together since then. Ah, uh, the sign of a great relationship is that it navigates, and not avoids, the rapids and twists of a shared life. And, um... I don't love her anymore. Oops. In fact, I'm not sure I ever did. Of course you did. Remember all those things you have in common? But that's just it. 
It's not her I love, it's her callback function. Oh. It was her callback function that loves the baseball games and basketball games and was witty and laughed at my jokes. Well, well, well. The real Sarah is annoying. She never stops talking about her work. She has no interest in sports. We have no shared interests at all. We're chalk and cheese. Quite the situation. I don't know what to do. Well, you have to tell her. But it'll break her heart. But it's not fair to her now, letting her think you love her when you just want her callback function. You need to do right by her. You have to tell her. (sighs) You're right. And the sooner the better. (sighs) Okay, I'll do it tomorrow night. It's for the best. So we tried to fix the bug, but we had no idea where to start. We checked the initialization code, but there was nothing there. We checked the primary coordinator, but there was nothing there. We checked. Okay, I can't stand it. Dave? Look, I'm sorry, but. But I don't love you anymore. I've met someone else. You've what? It's your callback function. She's the woman I love, not you. And I want her back. But, Dave... Look, I didn't want it to be this way. It's not my fault. In fact, it's your fault for leaving me with her. But, Dave... We have nothing in common. We need to be honest about this. But, Dave, I don't love you anymore either. What? Really? You you don't? Oh, hell no. Not even remotely. I've met someone else, too. You know, I've been thinking a lot about baseball recently. But you hate baseball. Well, that's what I thought. But ever since I addressed up to that next higher plane during that game the other night, it's been on my mind. Maybe your callback function likes baseball. Can that happen? Can that affect my preferences? You share an almost identical psychodigitality. And there's that word again. But there's room for differences. So you think his love for the game could be rubbing off on me? Structure, you won't believe this. I'm getting a coffee. So, I told Sarah I didn't love her anymore and that it's her callback function I wanted. How did she take it? Waterworks? No, she was delighted. Turns out she doesn't love me anymore either and she's met someone else too. Really? Wow. Who? Anyone we know? Yes, you. What? Well, not you, you. You in the higher plane of existence. You're addressed you. Yeah, apparently after going to Jaws with you, which I still haven't forgiven you for, she bumped into you a couple of days later and you both went to see a screening of Terminator 2. Oh, I love Terminator 2. So does she. Who knew? And it all grew from there. Apparently you two can't keep your hands off each other. Well, isn't this astonishing? I know. So what are you going to do about it? Well, that's the problem. Ah, there's always a problem. She wants to move permanently to the higher plane so she can be with you. Your addressed you. And her callback function would then permanently settle in this plane to be with me. But that sounds perfect. Problem is, that sort of permanent memory reallocation isn't normal for sea pointers for some reason. And it'll permanently cut off this plane from the next. No one would ever be able to address to that plane again. So we have to ask the Supreme Galactic Court of C for permission. The Supreme Galactic what? Apparently some bigwigs who run the whole C show. Anyway, they'll never go for it. Why would they permanently separate two planes of existence for the love of a couple of callback functions? We have no leverage. It's one in a million that they'd go for it. You know what? I might be able to help you there, my frustrated friend. When's your court appearance? parties obfuscated in their pure and natural syntax be heard. All right. Case 13106KA4, memory reallocation. Speak your name. Uh, Dave? Sarah. State your business you bring before this court. I want to permanently reallocate myself to the next higher plane of existence so that my callback function moves up to permanently reside with him in this plane, your honor. But that would mean permanently separating this plane of existence from the next, would it not? It would, Your Honor. Then absolutely not. Out of the question, request denied. Just one moment, Your Honor. Who are you? 
I'm Structure Science and frankly, I'm sick of you sea lot looking down your noses at other programming languages, acting all high and mighty, with your airs and graces, with your mallocks and freeze. Young man, you will adjust your tone Java's or... just as much a proper programming language as C. The young man is ordered to remain quiet or the bailiff will be I asked... I have proof that C programmers are trafficking in Java garbage collectors. <gasps> Yeah, not so high and mighty now, are we? Imagine what this would do to all your precious C programmer reputations if everyone knew you were secretly worshipping at the idol of Java's garbage collector. Look, I'm sure this is all some misunderstanding. Do the memory allocation for them. Look, even if we wanted to, we couldn't. What you ask is highly irregular. We don't have anyone on our staff with the prerequisite memory capabilities. It would need someone symmetrical to all reference plane translations. Symmetrical to all reference plane translations? What does that mean? What you ask can only be done by someone whose own memory allocation is identical, not only in the two reference planes in question, but in all reference planes. There is no one like that anymore. Wait a minute. Do you mean someone panstantiated across the reference verse? You want me to do what? permanently reallocate Sarah to the next higher plane so that her callback function is permanently allocated to ours. You can do that, right? You're panstantiated. Well, I could, but that would permanently shut off the next reference frame from this one. I'd need a license from the Supreme Galactic Court of C, and those bozos don't budge for anything or anyone. Voila! Oh, I see. But hang on. Before I do this, there's something I want in return. C-Beam Generator License. Approved. So, when are you going to do the memory reallocation? I can do it now if you like. Oh, wait! Structure, before we become separated from that plane forever, I want that baseball. What baseball? You said I caught a home run baseball on that higher plane when you skipped out on me. Yeah, but... I want that baseball! I've always wanted to catch the baseball that's been hit for a home run, and that was probably my only chance. And you owe me. How do I owe you? You skipped out and went to the cinema. Look, this seems a little... Here's my spare key. Go over to my flat now in the higher plane when I'm both here in work and get that ball for me. Then we're even. Can I even do this? Can I take something from the higher plane and bring it back here? Sure. Things are just sea struts. Things are just sea structs. Do you mean everything is a sea struct? Yep. You can bring back the pointer to it. No non-C programmer would ever know the difference. Certainly not Dave. <sighs> okay, okay. But it'll take me an hour to get to your apartment in this traffic. You can bring it to me tomorrow. When you get home tonight, let structure us know so she can work her magic. Fine. But then we're even. Even. Oh, I meant to ask. What is a C-beam generator, and why did you want it so badly? Oh, just a thing I wanted, to do something with it. Fair enough. Chris? Computer, lay in a course for the Tannhauser Gate. Oh my god, you didn't get one? You never got one? Tell me you did not get one! Computer... You did get one! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Laying in course for the Tannhauser Gate Stellar Nursery! Activate warp. Computer... Look, just this once, could you say it? Computer... But this is such a special occasion! If you're ever going to say it, this is the time! You know I'm right! <sighs> Fine. Engage. Yes! Engaging light speed in ten! Nine! Eight! Psych!
Computer, spool up C-beam generator. C-beam generator, initialized. Computer, fire C-beams. Hello? Did you get the ball? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Good. Make sure you bring it into work tomorrow. Look, I don't mind hanging on to it. It's been here all evening. A few more days won't matter. No, I definitely want it tomorrow. Okay, fine by me. Over a sea he struck. <laughs> Okay, okay, I know. We've gone on for far too long about what we should do without going into the specifics of what we're actually going to do. So let's finally run something. Quick summary to date. Our two golden definitions are that science is the building of models which make falsifiable predictions about large-scale objective measurements. And the goal of source code structuring is to make source code structures that are cheap to change. So how do we objectively measure source code change? We write two tool programs and a bash script. Let's download an open source Java program from GitHub. This is the program we'll analyze. And also download Git for Windows. You use whatever environment you like to get Git up and running. Let's write a bash script to check out the very first and second revisions of that program from Git and compile them to bytecode. Yes, we'll analyze the bytecode rather than the source code text as this bypasses any issues with formatting and is just a little easier. We'll then write our first tool program to convert this bytecode into a greatly simplified format which jettisons all the actual bytecode and retains only those method properties that we're interested in, such as which methods are connected to which, the size of methods, etc. Finally, we'll write a second tool program which compares these two program revisions method by method and finds all those methods which have changed between the two revisions, recording specifically the properties of methods that have changed. For example, whether method A in revision 1 doubled in size when it appeared in revision 2, or whether it went from depending on 5 other methods to depending on 15 other methods, etc. With this in place, we'll revisit our bash script and update it to check out not only the first and second revisions, but to loop over all the revisions in the master and compare each revision with the one before. Thus we'll end up with the entire history of how methods have changed throughout the program's lifetime. Here, for example, is how the average method size of program Bitcoin J changes over 976 consecutive commits. And here are the number of changed methods per commit. And of course, we won't stop at just one program. The large scale of large scale objective measurements mean we'll analyze as many programs as we can get our hands on. We begin by analyzing 17 programs over a total of 24,006 commits. We'll try to constantly add programs to this test group because the more code we analyze, the more confidence we have in our conclusions. Or rather, the more opportunities we have to show that our conclusions are wrong. With all these programs in the test group, we can start to really understand this beast called source code change that drives the world's design. We can ask all those questions you've always wanted to ask. For example, averaged over all programs, what percentage of methods change each commit? And what percentage of methods change over a program's entire lifetime? And so many more. But the true fun begins when we can analyze which methods change most and investigate the properties of those and their surrounding methods to see whether we can identify a subset of properties associated with those methods, but which are not associated with methods that change only infrequently. 
basically, is there something about the structural properties of methods that change a lot that differentiates them from methods that don't? If we can identify those structural properties, then we can come up with some science-based rules saying, if you want code that's cheap to change, avoid this. Here are Bitcoin J's most changed methods over its 976 revisions. The question is, why these and not others? Now, there's a host of problems with all this. Firstly, we're analyzing only open source code because that's all we can get our hands on. And if there's a fundamental difference between open source and commercial code, then our generalizations won't be applicable to commercial code. We must acknowledge this and make it clear that we're assuming that there's no difference. And if this assumption is wrong, then so are all our conclusions. Secondly, we're not going to analyze entire programs simply because we don't have the processing power in our <coughs> server farm. Some of the partial programs already take 48 hours to process. Instead, we'll analyze parts of programs, usually all the code within a subset of the directory hierarchy. But there will be a lower limit of, say, 1000 methods, so that the analyzed programs are not trivial. Thirdly, just as we want a minimum number of methods, we also want a minimum number of git revisions. We'd love to analyze only those revision histories that are thousands of commits long, but not all programs have that much development. And see next point. So for now, we'll arbitrarily limit analysis to programs with at least 300 commits, with the ambition to raise this as time goes on. Fourthly, we won't analyze the entire Git history of any program, at least not as one block. This is an unfortunate consequence of analyzing bytecode rather than source code, because the Java language itself evolves. If a program starts life compiled with Java 6 and then moves to Java 7, then this might introduce a small change within a single revision throughout all the program's method bytecode, even though the source code text itself might be unaffected. This will register to our analyzer as all the methods having changed, when really this change is an artifact of our analysis strategy and not a real change. So instead, we'll split the lifetime of a program into a number of revision series, where each series is the consecutive commits to master using the same Java version. Thus, if a program is long enough and several Java versions have been employed, it might contribute two or three revision series to our analysis. Lastly, we'd like all these tool programs and scripts to be open source, so that everyone can repeat the analysis for themselves. Thus, the description below contains all the necessary links, except, alas, the first tool program, which converts the Java bytecode to simple property structure, is not open source. And it's not even the best quality. At some future time, we'll find or write an open source bytecode analyzer and use that instead. Actually, there are many more concerns we need to address, but that's enough for this episode. Next time, the story continues. <laughs>